Shalom. Today we are going to cover the fifth month in our presentation of how the constellations that are associated with each month have something to say about the Hebrew month in the calendar. The fifth month is not named anywhere in Tanakh. We see some things that happened at this time. Numbers 33-38 And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of Yahweh and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. So it's kind of a, an ending time. Ezra 7.9 For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth, fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. So that's something of a beginning time. Now something very important did happen in the fifth month in history. We'll talk about more about that, but here's a scripture. Jeremiah 52:12 and 13. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem, and burned the house of Yahweh, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire. So this is taking place in the year 586 BCE. It became a time of mourning, Zechariah 7.3, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of Yahweh of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself, as I have done these so many years? The name of the month, of the fifth month in the Babylonian naming system, is Av, and you know this word, uh, it means father in Hebrew. Genesis 2.24 Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Genesis 12.1 Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. As we said in the previous video, the time between the 17th day of the previous month, the fourth month, through the ninth day of the fifth month, is called Ben Hametzarim, which means between the straits, and it's a time of mourning. So the walls were breached uh, in Jerusalem on the 17th, or somewhere thereabouts, and then uh, somewhere thereabouts, 9 or 10, it seems like over time, over the years, the, that date has shifted from the 10th to the 9th. These three weeks uh, are, are a time of mourning, uh, marking the fall of the city. Now the ninth day of Av marks not only the fall of the first temple, but in 70 of the modern era, it marks the day of the destruction of the second temple. And there are many, many other events which took place exactly on this day, on the ninth day of Av. It's almost like God is trying to say something to the people. Classical Jewish sources maintain that the Jewish Messiah will be born on the ninth of Av, which is called Tisha B'Av. Tisha just means the ninth, though many explain this idea metaphorically as the hope for the Jewish Messiah was born on Tisha B'Av with the destruction of the temple. And again, we see the redemption of the fifth month, uh, as we saw the fourth month in Zechariah 8:19. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the previous month, Tammuz, the fast of the fifth, which we're talking about here, the ninth of Av, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. Another interesting idea about the ninth of Av would be the ninth generation from the father. And here in Chronicles uh, 1, we see um, the 10, 11, 11th generations running from Adam through Noah's children. And the ninth person mentioned here is Lamech, and this is Noah's father. The ninth fellow is named Lamech, and uh, his translation of his name is a, a little bit difficult. We can look at it in two ways. If you look at any Strong's or Concordance, it will tell you that it means a strong person or a young, strong young person. 
And I believe this comes from the idea of the Lamech who was on Cain's side of the family. And he's the one who had two wives. He was the first one to do so. And he slays a young man. And he says to his wives, if Cain is avenged seven times, then I will be avenged 77 times. There's not really a great root, a three-letter root that we could look at in Hebrew to determine what his name actually means. There is another possibility. There is a word which appears in a few places, uh, poetically speaking. It's Lamo, Lamed Mem, Cholombav. And it is translated as a small preposition, at or to or for in this case. And it is believed to be a contraction of the Lamed, which is the preposition to, and the Mem, uh, standing for Ma. In other words, for what or to what. The Cholom Vav at the end is a third person masculine singular. To what end? The end being represented by the Him there. The Ma is a masculine singular. To what? In this case, if the children are multiplied, for what? It'll be for the sword. In other words, they're going to be slaughtered. Since we know that that Cholom Vav is for the third person masculine singular, we know that the Kaf at the end will be for the second person uh, singular, either masculine or feminine. So we could stretch this a little bit and say that this is to you or for you. You are the end of the uh, what the whole sentence is, is indicating, which we're going to see in one minute. It's a little bit of a stretch. We don't have to use it. Hirsch gives another interpretation for this root, la mer, as uh, some, an outstanding leader, somebody who stands out in his generation as a strong leader. We want to remember that Yeshua said, I and the Father are one. He also said to Philip, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? The sign for the fifth month is Leo the lion, and I know that you're looking at uh, two lions here. The upper, which is the um, Leo minor, is a very late addition to the, to the sky of constellations, probably 17th century, and it's not in any of the ancient pictures or texts. The lion is known as the king of beasts for several reasons. It's the largest member of the cat family and it is carnivorous. Lions have no uh, natural enemies except the human being. The um, cat is the only cat that has a mane. And the mane is almost like a crown. It gives the lion a very royal look. Uh, lions are inactive about 20 hours out of the day. They uh, hunt for meat, they eat, and then they just uh, sleep. So it uh, sounds like royalty a little bit to me. And it's universally recognized as um, a regal beast, as we see in many, many, especially of the European royal shields in the heraldry. There are many lions appearing in those pictures. The word, well, there's more than one word for lion in Hebrew, of course, because it's Hebrew. Um, the word for the constellation is Arye, and is a common word for lion. The other words for lion depend on the gender and the age of the lion. Genesis 49.9 Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him? And we know that Judah is associated with the uh, lion, the lion of Judah, is the Messiah. Judges 14.8 And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees in the honey in the carcass of the lion. A story of Samson. I want to bring your attention to a commonly translated verse in Psalm 22 where it says, it's translated, they have pierced my hands and feet. There is no uh, verb there about piercing. 
What it says literally is, they have done like a lion to my hands and feet. Which is interesting because Daniel 6.16, then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into a den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. If you look in Psalm 22, there are two other places where um, the author talks about being surrounded by lions and being saved from lions, and we know that this is a messianic psalm. So it's an interesting parallel with Daniel. Now Peter also teaches about the devil. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So is the adversary a roaring lion? No, but he's walking around like one, so that we might live in fear. But fear is not, not from God. And in Revelation it is reiterated, chapter 5, verse 5, and one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Talking, of course, about Yeshua, the Messiah for the whole world. The word arye, lion, comes from a root, ara. It's only used in these two places. Psalm 80, verse 13, Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her. And so we have the idea of some kind of uh, forcible destruction as we see in Psalm 22 where the lion uh, is indicated as having pierced either with his uh, toes, uh, his, his nails, his claws, or his teeth. Um, in Song of Songs 5.1, I have come into my garden, my sister, my spouse, I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends, drink. Yea, drink abundantly, O beloved. So for gathering myrrh, uh, myrrh would be a, a resin or a sap which is coming out of the tree and, and dries quickly. So to gather it, you kind of have to crack it, crack it off the tree. So it's a similar idea of, of plucking. Within the star group, which is called Leo, which you see the stars here, a portion of it is called the sickle, and this is well documented through history. And it is this uh, backwards question mark, which uh, starts in the Epsilon star, al Ganubi, and runs through the Ra Salas, which is the head, the Adhafera, which means the main, al Jabiya is the... Um, the forehead and running down to Regulus. Regulus is uh, from the Hebrew word regel, meaning leg. So this backwards question mark is called a sickle. The Hebrew word for sickle is magal. Actually, there's more than one word, but um, I chose this because it's got a gimelamid root. Jeremiah 50:16. Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest for fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his own people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Joel 3.13 Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And we see in Revelation 14.14 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud sat one like unto the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So very clearly looking like the picture of the lion, the son of man, Yeshua, has in his hand, as we see in the picture of Leo the lion, the sharp sickle. Remember, he said, I and the Father are one. That is the last chapter of this presentation, having run the whole year or the 12 months. And we'll go on to something else next time. In the meantime, Tasimitei Naim Ashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. Come down, come down.
Christmas. 